So, biscuits. There's a lot of discussion out there about biscuits and uh, self-rising flour versus Formula L biscuit mix versus pastry flour versus AP flour. But I'm going to tell you right now, it all goes back to um, how you handle the flour. Um, and I think cutting that fat into the flour is your very first step. We talked about that with the streusel where we actually cut that flour slowly in and have that, that cornmeal-like consistency. And that's kind of what we're looking for. I have all my dry ingredients here. I don't need to sift it because I'm going to be working it. Uh, we have flour, baking powder, a little bit of salt, some soda, and um, just a touch of sugar. So, and some recipes don't have any sugar, some do. Some don't have any baking soda because, well, there's using regular milk as opposed to buttermilk. Um, so all those things can be adjusted. So follow the recipe you have in your packet and you're ready to go with that. All right, so butter, once again, cold, okay? And we're gonna take that butter and throw that in. You wanna make sure the butter is good and cold. For those of you at home, I would highly suggest maybe chopping it up first out of the refrigerator, laying it out flat on a piece of parchment paper and putting it in your freezer so it's good and hard. And there's another little trick too to get your butter cut down. You can actually freeze your stick of butter by weight and then just actually use the grater box and watch it come off that way, that works too. So I'm gonna get in there with my hands and I'm going to first get all the chunks of butter apart from each other by using the flour. And then I'm gonna use what's called the shearing method. Um, now, there's cutters out there. It's that little, it looks like a little handle. It's got the wires off of it. That works. I know my grandmother used it for years. Um, you can use the mixer, but once again, you gotta be careful and don't let it get too far. Um, you can use a fork where you actually go in and cut through using the fork method, and that cuts it as well, because what we're calling this is cutting. You're cutting the fat in, and you'll see that it comes off these little pieces. But you can also achieve this by using your hands and breaking up the pieces with your hands. Now, once again, this is coating the flour with the fat and it basically slows down the absorption rate of the liquid that's gonna come from buttermilk in this case. And uh, will hopefully cut down on the gluten. Now, when we're doing breads, uh, for instance, in week one we did yeasted breads and we used AP flour, but primarily we used bread flour. Now bread flour has that 11.5% protein, so it's got some gluten possibility there going to work up really nicely and make some good bread but in the case of making biscuits you're looking at that nine to eight almost seven which is why you'll see a lot of people talk about pastry flour and then there's a lot of folks that swear by some of those different flours that are out there in the market lily um, those kinds of things white lily is a, is a really popular one um, however I feel like you don't need to pay for something that is self-rising because you already have baking powder in your kitchen. So um, do it that way. All right, so you'll see now I'm taking my hands and actually shearing this. I am a firm believer that this will cause flaky biscuits. Because um, you can actually take that fat and mash it between your hands with the flour there. We're also going to do this when we get to pie week um, to make that flaky pie dough. But you don't want to have any major big chunks of butter like so. So we're just going to go through and do this all by hand. Stay with it. It's uh, It takes a little bit of time. Um, but it's well worth the investment instead of using the mixer. All right, so when we come back, we will have this down to our mealy stage with flakes in it, and we'll go ahead and do our fabrication. So we have our biscuit mix all ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and take, I've got a, a buttermilk here. I'm gonna make a well in the middle. I like to see the bottom of the bowl, and I'm gonna pour 
my buttermilk, all of it, right down in there. And then what I do next is um, I take the, the flour mixture that we've got and throw it into the middle. And I just want to get this wet enough so I'm not causing any major um, issues by overmixing. All right. So once that happens, then we're going to take a little bit of flour on our onto our counter. And this is bread flour. I usually use bread flour as my dusting flour. It doesn't absorb. It's really nicely finely ground, so it doesn't have any chunks in it. And I'm going to take my scraper there, and I'm going to bring the dough together. I even fold it a couple times in the bowl. And then once I've got it together, I want to make sure I get everything out of that bowl. Bring it into a pile right on top and at this point uh, this is where everything's kind of super super important so I'm going to a little dust at the top I'm gonna flatten it out just a touch bring everything together I'm gonna give this a couple of folds so we're gonna go one over okay one over if anything falls out, put it in. One more over, and then one more over. So that's four folds. Now, this should, in essence, allow us for some of that flakiness that's gonna happen in there. So then what I can do, I don't even need a rolling pin. I can just flatten this out by hand. And I'm gonna do about just under a half an inch thick because we're looking for something that's nice and big and fluffy. Okay. And the next step is really, really important. So I've got my cutter here. I'm gonna take that cutter and put it in the flour. And when I go in, you'll notice I'm gonna go straight down and I'm not gonna turn. I'm just gonna give it a shuffle, okay? It's really important because when you go in and twist, what you're doing is you're taking all those edges and you're tightening them down. And then the steam has nowhere to go out except for through the top. You seal the edges, and the top ends up with a dome, and then you end up with cracked biscuits. You want something nice and flat. And you can see right there on the side all of those nice layers there. And then we're going to go ahead and put them onto the pan. Pretty close to one another. Okay? Don't need to be too far apart. And then we'll show you how to take your, your second cut. So we're going to take this part and stack. So you see all I did was stack it all up. And then after I stack it, I'm going to give it one fold and flatten it back out. Now this is a gentle thing here. I don't need to go too crazy. Once again, cut. Do not twist and turn. Just cut straight. Okay, and then these last scraps here, I'll actually collect those up and use those. So once again, oven spring is super important. So I've got an oven riding at about 400 degrees here, and I want to make sure it's nice and hot at home. 400 degrees is good because when you open that oven door, it's going to drop to about 375 degrees. You'll notice I could fit about a finger in between each of these biscuits, and that's plenty. You actually kind of want them to be somewhat close. They're not going to spread, they're going to lift. So we'll go ahead and put these in. Uh, I'm not doing a wash on these because I can do a butter wash when they come out. Uh, a lot of folks talk about milk wash, butter wash, salt wash, all kinds of things. And you can do that at home and test it out and let us know what you think, maybe from a food science aspect, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven for about 17 to 20 minutes. All right, so our biscuits come out of the oven, nice. 
we've got uh, there's that split it's good you get a nice rise up you don't see any major cracks until we got to here you know this is where the that was that last run um, but the first few just split right apart I mean, it even gives you the split mark, which is kind of nice. This is something my grandmother was always super proud of, that she had those split biscuits. So, there's a good one. Perfect for that piece of morning sausage. Alrighty, so there's your biscuits, folks.